This is the longest I've actually really seen. But just looking at the national news lately, I knew it was important for me to get out early. Michelle Obama said wear good sneakers and here I am. Being the first day, we kind of figured it'd be like this. Let's go. We're going to vote today on the first day of early voting. We are voting. The first day of early voting is in the books. We've seen some long lines across our state. From Murphy to Manio, North Carolinians showed up in force. The scene was similar in all corners of our state. Massive turnout, lines wrapping through parking lots as voters spread out and socially distance. The State Board of Elections says more than 272,000 people voted today. If you add that to the absentee ballots already submitted, 11% of our state has already voted. Well, today is the first of 17 days of early voting in our state, so take a look at how it went in the Piedmont Triad. WFMY News 2's Alma McCarty spoke to voters and the Guilford County Board of Elections. One day down, 16 days to go. Guilford County Board of Elections officials tell me they've never seen anything like it. The number of sites, the sheer number of poll workers, and the amount of enthusiasm from voters. Even before the early voting sites opened Thursday morning, long lines stretched down sidewalks and around buildings. Those lines lasted really throughout the day. Uh, only in the evening, some of the sites have really, um, really cleared out. Charlie Collicutt, director of the Guilford County Board of Elections, says wait times ranged from 15 or 20 minutes to two hours. Some said even longer. It's almost three hours now. So, you know, the line, the wait line has been very long. Collicutt said some lines appeared lengthy due to social distancing, but moved pretty quickly. It's not always going to be like this. The, the next couple of days and weeks may not be like, like it was this morning and this day. But it will. We'll get back to this by the end. But today was just a big day. Elections officials dealt with a few missteps from a misplaced key to the ballots to not nearly enough of them at some locations. We've had a couple of, of issues that I chalk up to being the first day. We were going to have to always supplement ballots, and we hit a couple areas that, that we had to supplement a little earlier than normal. Nearing the end of the day, wait times at the Greensboro Coliseum Fieldhouse dropped significantly. So I was really shocked when I went in, and there were probably only 50 people in line. Matthew Neely expected a longer wait, but no matter what, he was voting today. This vote this year is probably, to me, the most important of, of my lifetime. Masks, social distancing, and protective shields made him and early voter Dana Daniels feel safe. Booths were clean. They were being sanitized as people left. And we had stop signs to put in the booth to show that someone was there prior. Despite a global pandemic, voters say it's their patriotic duty, a right, a privilege. This year, it counts. It always did. But to me, more than ever, no matter how you feel, vote this year. In Greensboro, Alma McCarty, WFMY News 2. I told you more than 272,000 North Carolinians voted today. For some perspective, let's take a look back at 2016, the last presidential election. The state said back then 162,000 people voted on the first day, about 100,000 fewer. This is what it looked like four years ago. Pretty similar to today, big turnout, long lines. Of course, no social distancing needed back then. I want to also show you the first day of early voting in 2018, two years ago. Keep in mind it was a midterm election and turnout is typically lower in those years. 133,000 North Carolinians voted that day. And this is video from that day two years ago. The lines weren't nearly as long as 2016. And again, no social distancing necessary. No second presidential debate tonight. It was canceled after both candidates couldn't agree on a platform after the president tested positive for the coronavirus. Instead, we got two separate town halls on separate TV stations in separate battleground states. Voters asking the candidates questions instead of speeches or rallies. Let's start with the President Trump and his town hall. He held his in Miami, Florida. He discussed how he handled his own coronavirus infection. You have to understand, as president, I can't be locked in a room someplace for the next year and just stay and do nothing. And every time I go into a crowd, uh, I was with uh, the parents of our fa fallen heroes. These people are the most incredible people. And they came up to me and they would hug me and they would touch me. And I'm not going to not let them do it. Now on to Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. He held his own town hall in Philadelphia. He criticized the president's pandemic response. 
It is the presidential responsibility to lead. And he didn't do that. He didn't talk about what needed to be done because he kept worrying, in my view, about the stock market. He worried if he talked about how bad this could be unless we took these precautionary actions, then in fact the market would go down. And his barometer of success in the economy is the market. Before tonight's town halls, President Trump was in North Carolina. He campaigned at the small airport in Greenville today. Democratic vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris was supposed to visit Charlotte and Asheville today. Her team decided to go virtual after two people connected to the campaign tested positive for coronavirus. Her rally site in Charlotte was left empty as a result. Vice President Mike Pence will be in our state tomorrow. He'll campaign in Selma, southeast of Raleigh. The rally starts at 1.30 at The Farm at 95. Greensboro City Hall will close through the weekend after the city confirmed a coronavirus case on the property. They say a contractor working at the downtown building tested positive. Now the Melvin Municipal Office building will close tomorrow through Monday morning for deep cleaning. We are digging into a concerning number in our state's coronavirus data today. 2,532 new cases today alone. It's a record high for our state, about 50 cases more than the next highest total. So what does this mean? Are we on the verge of a second wave or peak? Daily case totals over 2,000 don't happen often, so let's take a look at when they came up. First, this month. Take a look at the bars shaded here in red. Those are the days we tallied more than 2,000 new cases. We're only halfway through the month and we already have seven. Looking back to September, just two days with daily coronavirus totals over 2,000. Two months ago, in August, a similar situation, just two days with new cases over 2,000. Finally, July, when we saw our state's coronavirus data hit its highest point, 10 days with daily totals over 2,000. Take a look at the trend line across all those months. You can see that peak in July right in the middle of the graph. Then on the far right, the line creeping up again in October. Our state's health leaders are worried about this trend. All four of our key data points are on the rise this month. What comes next for our state depends on what happens with these numbers. Count on us to continue keeping track. Well, even though North Carolina just saw the highest increase of coronavirus cases during the entire pandemic, religious services are allowed under the First Amendment. Tonight, the tent revival returned to Burlington and attracted large crowds. WFMY News 2's Marissa Tanzino shows us the guidelines to keep people safe. On this first night of many for this tent revival in Burlington, people couldn't get by without filling out a form and having their temperature taken on the way in. Hundreds came out to take part in a tent revival in Burlington to come together during a time of uncertainty. I just wanted to come out and see the crowd and be a part of the body of, the, of Jesus Christ. We want to pray and repent and say, God, change this nation started with me. Change America started with me. But organizers are still keeping in mind the health and safety of worshipers, temperature checks when you walk in, and a form to fill out with basic information like name and address. We funneled everyone through two lanes to get into the tent. Organizer Frank Mickens says hand washing stations are set up around the property and they're giving out masks to anyone who doesn't have one. At the end of the day, what we want to do is give people the tools to be careful and take precautions. We also have been in touch with the health department. Betty Wilson, who's from Green. Greensboro says she's comfortable with the precautions in place. I think it's wise. You know, you need to have guidelines and stick with those. You know, it's nice to get my temperature taken. <laughs> I've <laughs> um, got my mask, you know. Wilson says she just hopes people can use this as a time to come together. Having a unified feeling in our hearts that we all came together, that we prayed for our country, that we prayed for um, people. The tent revival will be held every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for the next four weeks right off of I-40. And they're expecting anywhere from 500 to 1,500 people on any given night. It is important to note that religious activities are exempt from all requirements in the governor's phase three executive order. It clearly states worship and other activities constituting the exercise of First Amendment rights are exempt. It goes on. They are strongly urged to follow the recommendations and wear face coverings and avoid exceeding maximum occupancy. 
I'll tell you what, it's not all the time in October that you have temperatures quite this warm and muggy at this late hour. There's a reason for that. Temperatures right now are close to 70 in many areas. We have winds pumping in out of the south and west, bringing us that warmth and humidity. It's ahead of a cold front that's just about to arrive going into tomorrow morning. That's what's going to cool us down right now. Starting to see a couple of showers, at least near the Charlotte area. They are developing and some of them are actually pretty potent, even though they're small. They're moving right up by 85 and I would expect them to kind of blossom and grow as we welcome in the next couple of hours. Noticing you will see some scattered showers through about eight, nine o'clock tomorrow morning, maybe even a rumble of thunder. And then again, another round of showers is possible late tomorrow afternoon into the evening. Keep both of those time frames in mind for possible rain again overnight while you're sleeping, winding down by mid morning and then another chance for the evening. Temperatures fall tomorrow. They're in the 60s now, but we're going down into the 50s throughout the day. Coming up, we'll talk about that cool fall weekend. New at 11, the Grand Police Department has a new chief. Christy Cole has been promoted to be the next police chief. Cole is a native of Alamance County. She first joined the department in 1997 and has worked her way up the ranks. She's been serving as the interim chief since June and is taking over for Chief Jeff Pritchard, who's retiring. You might remember back in June, Chief Pritchard apologized after he shared a controversial post on the police department's Facebook page. Pritchard said he inadvertently post shared a post about the Black Lives Matter movement and the pandemic. Critics called the post tone deaf and divisive to the issues of racial injustice and inequality. A major shakeup within the Winston-Salem Forsyth County School District. Its leader announced she is resigning to take a new job in Danville, Virginia. Dr. Angela Harrison has been the superintendent of the Winston-Salem Forsyth County School District for just over a year. Danville Public Schools announced Harrison will be their next superintendent starting December 1st. Much of Harrison's early career was spent in Danville, Virginia as a teacher, assistant principal and principal. Dr. Harrison said in a statement, I have the chance to accept an opportunity dear to my heart within another school district that I cannot pass up. The Winston-Salem Forsyth County School Board Chair said, Our board has been through some difficult times in recent months, but I can assure you we will do what we think is best for students, best for staff, and best for our community. The Confederate Monument in Uptown Lexington will soon be on the move. Today, a judge dismissed a lawsuit from Davidson County keeping it there. The city of Lexington and the statue's owner, the United Daughters of the Confederacy, agreed to move it if the city pays for it. In a statement, Mayor Newell Clark said, We remain grateful that the monument's owners were willing to work with us on the solution and are hopeful this is another key step toward a peaceful resolution during this important moment in history. It's not clear when it'll move or to where. New tonight, Guilford County Commissioners approved incentives to bring a data center to High Point. It's a $305 million investment from DC Blocks, but it won't create as many jobs as you might think. The High Point Economic Development Corporation says the multi-million dollar facility will only create about nine jobs total. Each will pay between $83,000 and $93,000 a year. Still, if the company accepts, the investment will mean a massive influx of tax dollars for the city and the county. Across the country, the state and the triad, restaurants have struggled during the pandemic. Many have closed, but one triad restaurant is expanding. Cugino Forno is opening a new pizzeria in Clemens next week. It already has locations in Greensboro and Winston-Salem. Well, even though the company is growing, the owner admits doing business during the pandemic has been a challenge. We're not a chain. We don't have a big uh, banks behind us that they're supporting us with big checks all the time. So we're basically trying to make the ends meet. Honestly, it's been very hard. Uh, to be honest, but we're uh, trying to look at the whole thing from the positive side. Thank God we are uh, able to pay our bills. The new Cugino Forno is in the new Clemens Town Center on Clemens Point Drive. Check out the fall colors at Grandfather Mountain, a stunning aerial view. Take a few moments to enjoy the sights and sounds of autumn in the mountains. It's next. Ah yes, 
It's the time of the year when deep greens turn to vibrant reds, oranges, and yellows. Now's the time to check out the beautiful fall foliage in the North Carolina mountains. My favorite time of year. The colors are changing at Grandfather Mountain. Our photojournalist Kyle Connolly brings you a breath of fresh air as the leaves turn. This is all of ours first time coming to the mountains. We're just out here as a family having a good time. We see a lot of trees, we see a lot of rocks, we see a lot of skies, just beautiful, beautiful skies. We are from Franklinton, North Carolina, a little over three hours from here out east. We decided to just take a family vacation. I love fall. Fall is my favorite season anyway. So to be out here and to see the trees already turning and everything's changing, it's just colorful. It's beautiful. This is dope. Great spot to come out on vacation with the fam or just come out with your buds, your best friends, you know, and have a good time. It really just <laughs> says it all. When you right. see those pictures and you hear the enthusiasm of people seeing those colors, it really is just moving. Right, and I could watch some of this video all day long. I just love the, the kind of shots that our drone can get. And Tim, I actually saw you in one of those shots. I was looking very closely and I saw Tim Buckley You're with, right his, there. Yeah, with his nice camera you over see, there. I'm right next to the tree. <laughs> yeah, I saw you. <laughs> I did go out there yesterday too. I didn't see our drone, but uh, I, will, I can personally attest the colors are great this year and actually better than in years past. And it's amazing to me how our colors are turning. My mom is up in upstate New York and she's sending me a picture that it's peak up there too. The climate in the mountains is really like the climate far north of here. It's amazing. It's and really I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go tomorrow. So how's the weather then? Okay, well we can talk about the weather, <laughs> I suppose. The weather is actually kind of muggy right now. It's a little warm, not quite as fall-like, but it will be turning and Chad will be able to get some cooler weather tomorrow. Much cooler, in fact. Here's a picture